Welcome, welcome you all. Welcome to Westminster, this place where art, faith, and nature meet. I'm so glad to see all of you here this beautiful day. When it's not rain church, it's sun church. And so we are so glad that you are here on this sunny, beautiful day with us. If you need sunscreen, I have it. So uh, when I'm not up here talking, just come privately, tell me, and we'll share sunscreen with you, okay? Um, so Park Church is a little bit more casual. Uh, you can get up and move around in the middle of the service if you'd like. Um, you can, we have these prayers that we are hanging up throughout our time together. So there were strips of fabric at the beginning. If you want to, in the middle of the service, just get up and write a prayer and hang it up, please feel free to do that, okay? So we are hoping that we're going to surround ourselves with prayers by the end of this summer. So we've got that, that starting there, and by the end of the summer, it's going to be all around. So do 50 prayers today, okay? Because we need them to surround us by the end of the summer. All right, you all, thank you again so much for being here. Here comes Olive. Yay. Maybe all of them. I know. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm going to invite you now to just take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in with me. And out. We're going to do three. Do one more. In. And out. Last one. In. And out. Let's turn our hearts and minds to worship. Remember sundown 
and the giving away tonight.
also said the kingdom of God is, is someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed sprouts and grows and does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain of the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Yes. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? With what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests and share. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. in prayer. Oh, there we go. Now I like fun. Woo! <laughs> All right. The wind came Let's out. Let's come together in prayer. Oh, loving one, we feel your spirit in the midst of this place gathered here as your people, your beloveds, help these parables to enlighten us, to inspire us, to uh, find you in new ways in the midst of of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Knock, knock. Who's there? Control freak. Yeah. Now this is the part where you say control freak who? Control freak. <laughs> right? It's a good one. Now this is a popular joke in our house. 
okay? <laughs> Mainly at my expense when I am trying to backseat drive or, uh, you know, trying to over explain something that everyone else in the family already understands, this joke will get pulled out in those moments. And it usually ends up with all of us laughing while I have a moment of self-realization where I can say, oh, got it, I'm not in control, right? And then take a few frantic deep breaths as we do. We all have moments like this, don't we? Where even with little things, we think we know the right way and know exactly how to do it. So we think we should be in charge of it all. And actually we kind of know a lot about a lot of things. So I want to be in charge of everything, right? Often people think those ideas come from a sense of arrogance. And maybe they do sometimes, but I also think they come from moments of anxiety and fear. Not wanting someone to fail or feel badly or wondering if they can do it. Maybe these moments of wanting to control even come from a place of wanting to be helpful, right? I've done this before, so let me help you, that kind of a place. Even if the help isn't wanted or needed, and let's also just be real for a minute. In a world that can feel chaotic and scary and often so out of control, it's understandable that we would want something to hold on tight to, just a little piece of control somewhere in our lives. So if you have never had a moment like this, I'm sure you at least know someone who has had a moment like this, right? Or maybe you live with someone who's had a moment like this. You all might be pleased or slightly terrified to know that the scripture reading for today is just for those of us who can tend towards wanting control. Which is why I've titled uh, my reflection for today, God's Doing It, or alternate title, Don't Be Such a Control Freak. As I mentioned before in scripture reading for today, there are two short parables. The first of which is super lovely. And it's really special actually because it's only found in the Gospel of Mark. And this is where we hear about the seed being scattered and then sprouting and growing while the someone who planted them sleeps. The earth doing all of the holy work of growing the seeds into a harvest. And then the someone who planted and slept comes back to reap the benefits of this beautiful harvest that the earth produced. Now this little parable is interesting because in the time it was written, this would have been wild to hear. That's part of parables, right? They're usually controversial or shocking. This would have been wild to hear. Farming was hard work, some of the hardest. Long hours, manual labor, a failed crop could mean no food for your entire family. This was tough stuff. And not only that, this was a hard time in the world. When the Gospel of Mark was written, the temple had been destroyed. And there was chaos and uncertainty. What was going to happen? What was the right way to be faithful now in the midst of violence and trauma and fear? How should they respond to this crisis? Does this little group of Jesus followers, do they become revolutionaries? Or do they just submit to Roman authority? Do they take up arms? Or do they just try to fit in? Or do they find a different way all together? And I think that third way is what the parable might be getting at. An alternate, subversive way a way that is deeply trusting in God, even in, especially in, the midst of the anxious and scary times. That's maybe what this parable offers, a reminder of the goodness and power of God in the midst of difficulty. I can almost hear the internal monologue of the original hearers of this story going something like this. What in the world is this kingdom of God stuff? The farmer sleeps? And then they just jump up and harvest? That's wild, I want that, right? I just wanna sleep and get up and harvest. 
I don't have to like watch it like a hawk. That's not how the kingdom works. God just doing stuff in the world. All right, I'm into that. I get along with that. We just plant and rest. Let the earth do its thing. Notice and then do our part and enjoy the harvest. This is a parable that seems to be leading us to trust and to rest and to hope, knowing that the world is not just in our hands, but in God's. Even in the midst of the pain of the world, God is growing something, and we can be a part of it. What a beautiful and important reminder for us, both then and now, right? And then comes the next parable for today. One you may be familiar with. You've got a little sneak peek because you all have mustard seed shakers in your hands. It's the parable of the mustard seed. You know, I've actually never preached on this parable. And when I told my colleagues that this week, they were just laughing at me. And they were like, what, really? You've never preached on something big coming from something small. <laughs> I was like, no. They are like, isn't that your whole life? You have the loudest voice in the world coming from the tiniest person, right? I was like, no, I've never preached on it. I've read it, I've known it, but never preached on it. So let me begin by saying that when this passage, when this was first told by Jesus, it was shocking. It was offensive. It was almost hilarious in the time that it was written. We miss all that now, right? We miss it. Sometimes we think the Bible's so reverent that we can't play with it and can't laugh with it and can't learn something different from it for our time and place. So you see, in this time that it was written, there was all this talk from the scriptures about faith being related to giant oak trees. The strength and stature and dignity and power of an oak. And in comes Jesus. And what is he talking about? Mustard seeds. Really? Do you know what mustard seeds make? Weeds. This is an entire parable about invasive weeds. This isn't about a beautiful plant sprouting in your garden. This isn't about the strength of an oak. No, this is about annoying, can't get rid of them, invasive weeds. We know something about that here, don't we? So you're thinking probably what I was, what, really, Jesus? And then not only that, but then these invasive weeds overgrow into huge shrubs. And then not only that, they bring birds that are going to eat up all the seeds you're trying to plant. What? What is happening here? So let me get this right. Faith is like an invasive weed that keeps spreading and growing until it's big enough to make shelter for some that you aren't even sure you want there. Exactly. Exactly. Oh man, I kind of like that first one better, right? Where we just get to sleep and something happens. <laughs> Can we go back to that one? That felt a little nicer, right? Farmers wake up very early, that's right. Yeah, we like to sleep in. We wouldn't be good farmers. So stick with me, the common interpretation of this parable, which you've probably heard, is something like this. Even a little faith will get you through. Even a little faith will get you through. And actually, even though it's a bit sentimental, I don't think that's a bad read of this parable. But again, from the Greek, as I mentioned, a parable is something that is thrown alongside your life for you to chew on and think about and ponder. They are meant to bring more questions than answers. There are just inherent layers of mystery in parable, which I think is what makes them so important. Mystery is what this faith stuff is all about, isn't it? So I don't have an answer for you about what this all means, but what I can do is put it in context for you, right? 
So remember what I said about the earlier parable where the temple had been destroyed, life was chaotic, this little ragtag group of Jesus followers was figuring out who they were going to be in the midst of this, this all? That's the context for this passage too. In the midst of the world falling apart, Jesus shares this parable. We are small but mighty. God's love is an invasive weed in a broken world and system that is going to grow and grow and grow until it makes shelter for all. And there's really nothing anybody can do about that. That's the word of hope that Jesus offers us. And if that isn't good news then and now, I don't know what is. Now here's the thing, I could preach these parables tomorrow and they would say something entirely different, right? That's the beauty of parables. They always have something different to teach us each time we look at them. And yet for us today, I truly hear two messages within these parables. God is growing things in this world and no one and nothing can stop that invasive weed of God's love from spreading and creating sanctuary. From something small comes something big and bold and beautiful. And we know something about that here at Westminster, don't we? Good stuff coming from small places. That's kind of us, isn't it? You know, I love these parables, not just because I think they are right for us at Westminster, but because they are also right for what it means to be Presbyterian. In our tradition, we talk about uh, the sovereignty of God almost as much as we talk about grace. So that's like a big lofty word, but what the sovereignty of God is all about is how God is already mysteriously moving and working and challenging and transforming and loving and welcoming in this world. Everything good and beautiful and true begins with God. That's what that theology is all about. And we get to see that in these parables. God is at work in the world. We see that, don't we? I hope we do. We see it in the simple ways that we care for one another in community. We see it in the justice movements that work to bring more love and equity and equality and justice and joy to all. We see it by being humble enough to know that we don't have all the answers, but maybe, maybe if we come together in community and trust that God will guide us, something beautiful can happen. God is moving and shaking all the time, everywhere, in so many ways. And the beautiful thing is, we can be a part of that. We can be a part of the stuff God's doing in the world. We just have to notice it. Quiet the control freak within us and jump in, ready to enjoy the harvest in ways we never could have imagined. So I have to tell you all something. After I read this passage Monday, getting ready to preach on it this week, for some reason, you all, mustard seeds kept appearing everywhere. I kid you not. I swear, I swear to God. This was happening, okay? In recipes I would read, mustard seeds. Walking in the grocery store, I just glance over at the spices, mustard seeds, okay? Everywhere. Then we went out to dinner with some friends on Friday night. I kid you not, five of the dishes had mustard seeds oh, in oh, them. Oh. I was like, okay, I get it, God. My goodness. So when that happened at dinner, I had this moment. It was like, what? I've never thought about mustard seeds this much in my life. Why would I? I don't even cook. Why would I think about mustard seeds, right? And then I had, ah, aha, duh, Megan kind of moment, right? We can learn to practice noticing God's love in the world. And when we learn to practice noticing God's love in the world, we can begin to see it everywhere. And that's how we know where to jump in. But we have to practice. We have to practice looking for God's love in the world. 
So we're gonna practice today. I want you to talk to someone you don't know or don't know as well. You're gonna have to get up and move around a little bit. And maybe you can go to the shady spots and talk. That might be a nice little break. I want you to get up and talk to someone and I want you to share one time you noticed God's love in the world. If God isn't language you use, spirit, greater being, greater power, just a time you have noticed God's love in the world. I'm never going to come back and share. Let's do it. Go for it. A time you've noticed God's love in the world. I want you to share. Uh, I want you to share back where you've seen a moment you've noticed or seen God's love in the world. Okay. And after someone shares, we're all going to shake our little mustard seeds. Okay. All right. I need a volunteer, or I'm going to voluntold someone. So uh, I need a volunteer. A time you've noticed God's love in the world. Sure. George. When the King James preached in front of Son, yeah. you know, it's shifts are to be as Jews and flowers. That's it. I left. Beautiful. Kids and flowers and every little drop of rain. And George was talking about when Katie came and Hamish was with her and I think it was the first Sunday when they all came and it was Pentecost and he was wearing those little red pants just running around like the Holy Spirit, which is so fun. So yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's shake our shakers. Yes, yes, amen, 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 amen. All right, who else has a moment they want to share? Did someone say something over here? Helen. Amen. It's so nice to be back and with everyone again and see people's faces. And that is God's love. Amen, 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 amen. amen. All right. Who else? Me. I'll, I'll sh share David's um, uh, story that his... Uh, his mother and his daughter were able to stay together for a month when his daughter was working on a show and it was a time when their love really blossomed and he just had or this daughter just had a, a baby which she named after his mother which Aww, is really exciting beautiful yeah. beautiful i love that all right who else yeah yes when the parents come to visit and their little contribution. Yes, oh my gosh, that is like my favorite thing about outside church is when the parents worship with us. And now, you know, the parents come to our backyard every morning because our neighbors have a palm tree and they're squawking at like 6 a.m. And so usually people are crabby about that. But Clarice comes and she goes, the parents are praying outside our house. <laughs> I know, it's so sweet, it was so sweet. All right, another love time you've seen or noticed God's love in the world. Tom. hear that over there okay oh george says no when jean was uh, so sick and we just did that you know a little thing of bringing meals or something which didn't even seem like a lot but tom was saying just dropping off the meal and jean's gratitude and just knowing that we were contributing and trying to help her to get healthy and get back you know was just really that was a god seeing god's love in the world and participating in it which is so cool yeah hannah i, I wanted to respond to that Mm -hmm. 
I love that. It's the mutuality in giving. So when we give mm. something and then someone expresses gratitude, that gratitude feeds us. Beautiful. Yes, 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 yes. Anyone else? David. David started, I don't know if you all heard that, when David started painting, he'd be walking, looking for inspiration, and he'd walk past something and heard a little voice say, hey, stupid, I was pointing that out to you, you know? And so he'd go back and look at what he had seen before and begin to realize that there was the spirit, whatever you want to call it, is there, but you have to be intentional about noticing it. And then that fed your art, right? That fed your art. Beautiful. I love that. All right. Any others? Yeah. hear that over there um so little voices that so a historian she mentioned john meacham uh the graduate student in texas who gave the uh the bella bella victorian speech um just these little voices that are breaking through the chaos in our world and even if they don't think or know it's god's voice those of us who who do think like that right we can hear god speaking through those those little voices which is really beautiful so amen all right, anyone else? I think we have to say thanks be to God. Praise thanks be God. to God. All right, now we have a special little piece of music that uh, Pam brought and Sarah is lovingly going to sing. It's just a fun, funky little piece of music. If you want to get your shaker going, it feels like, what does it even feel like? What's this? It sounds yeah, like klezmer it's, music. Um, I don't know, what did we say? Klezmer music? Yeah. Just, yeah. you might want to move, see how it feels, see how it moves you. Um, and here it is now. What is it called? It's, uh, if you only had faith that it's all about the mustard seed. All about the mustard seed on theme.
We're going to enter now into our uh, time of prayer, and I loved uh, the closing line of what Pat shared from that poem, you are all people and all people are you. That feels like a really beautiful uh, connecting phrase as we enter into our uh, our time of prayer here. So um, we're going to take a few uh, moments of silence, and then I'm going to open it up to, uh, to have you pray, uh, share the prayers that are on your heart or your mind this day. Um, and they can be prayers of thanksgiving to share uh, things you are grateful for in your life. And they can also be uh, prayers of help, you know, prayers you need um, for yourself, for our community, or for the world that you need to be wrapped in God's love. So let's join together in prayer now. and creator God, indeed we know that your seeds of love are everywhere in our midst. Whether we are coming to you today with heavy hearts in need of help, or we are coming to you today full of joy and delight, or some mixture of it all, we know that your love is enough to hold all that we bring and all that we are. So hear us now. Oh God, as we lift up to you the prayers of your beloved ones gathered here. You just want to raise your hand, I'll call on you and you can share your prayer. Peggy. Prayers for all our teens who are going through uh, you know, depression and mental health difficulties. Um, probably in part due to COVID and missing school and community and everything like that. Let's say together, Lord, Let's hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Prayers for a successful hip surgery for Roz, who's been in pain for a long, long time. On June 23rd, let's lift her up and have everything go really well. Mm -hmm. And then prayers of compassion and caring for one of my dearest friends. for Roz for a successful uh, hip surgery and just lifting her up on June 23rd when that happens. And then also uh, prayers for Carol's dear friend whose husband of 46 years uh, died two days ago. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Leslie's nephew, whose uh, girlfriend Kay passed away um, sort of unexpectedly to cancer at the age of 27. Lord, hear our prayers. I lift up a prayer of gratitude for just being together in this place, for, as Helen said, seeing each other's faces, and uh, just what a beautiful, what a beautiful thing. Um, I'm just soaking it in after not being together for so long. Every Sunday feels like a little miracle uh, to all be here together. So, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Up for Karen and her sister who's battling cancer. Yeah. For Karen and her beloved sister who's uh, battling cancer right now. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And thanks be to God for Karen's butterflies that we're going to get to raise while she gets to go uh, go be somewhere. We, Clarice and I get to somehow watch 
13 Little Monarchs. Um, we'll try to get video and show it to you all. Little Monarchs. It's a miracle. That's a miracle. Lord. All right. Yeah, so for uh, Dan and Ann and Olive and Alden, and if you need a little glimpse of love, there's some pretty cool hearts over here. Um, and just for the, the energy and love that, uh, that their family and kiddos bring into our community. Lord, oh, hear our prayers. I see a heart in that tree. There's a heart in the tree? See that, that tree? The, the, I got it. Oh yeah, I see it. For hearts and trees, if you can't see it, talk to Leslie after the service and she'll point it out to you, okay? Lord, hear your prayers. All right, let's join back together in prayer. Oh God, indeed, we know that you share your love. You are love. Help us to be uh, people who make your love visible in this world and hear us now oh god as we join together in the prayer that your beloved one taught us saying together our father who are in heaven Join together now in our quiet, uh, our quiet peace. I invite you to put your masks on. I think this is maybe the last Sunday we have to do that. Everything changes on June 15th. Or just like put your hand in front of your face if you didn't bring a mask, whatever. Uh, so uh, let's join together in our peace. from our poem. So why don't you come down here? Remember, you are this universe, and this universe is you. Remember, all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember the dance language is, that life is, remember. Amen. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. <laughs> Thank uh -huh.